Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira and today we're on part two of trying to finish up the abandoned coffee shop. Now you may remember from last week, this little guy, our resident of the coffee shop, and I asked for name suggestions. So I took all the names that you guys gave me in the comments, I wrote them down on pieces of paper and put them into these bowls. All the names were so cute, I had a hard time deciding, so you guys are going to help me. So in the left bowl, I have all names that have something to do with coffee or food. And in the right bowl, I have normal like person names. So I'm gonna pick two from each and then create a poll. So the first one is Muffin. So I think that's really cute, especially since it's a coffee shop that would have had snacks. And the second one is Java. So for the real person name selection, the first one is Lucky, which I had a hamster named Lucky. So that's a cute name. I At least I thought. <laughs> and the second one is Pinky as in Pinky and the Brain. So also really cool name for a little rat. So let me know in the I card above, there's gonna be a little poll and you can let me know your ideas. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with some things that I wanna put in the coffee shop. Now, as you noticed in the title, I did say that I am 3D printing things. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the handmade item while the 3D printer is working. I'm using Q-tips and I cut the ends off. These are gonna be the poles for my shelf. I'm making like an industrial looking shelf. And then I'm also using my 16th inch thick mat board. The first thing I wanna do is create the shelves. So I'm going to be making one inch by one inch square squares on this mat board and these are going to be my four shelves that go on to the industrial shelf. I'm using my square here but what I'm doing is lining it up with the grid on my mat. So I have four of those cut out and next I'm going to take my blade and make a little notch in each side. This is gonna be the place where I glue each pole. So I'm trying to make it about the same width as the Q-tip um, bar, I guess you would call it. And of course, um, the little notch I'm making is square and the Q-tip is round, but in the end, it works out. And so I'm doing that in each corner of my shelving. Now before I get started putting it together, I also want to go ahead and make some very long strips of cardstock. And this is about between, I think it's about an eighth inch thick pieces of cardstock. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and kind of curve it around one of my Q-tip pieces before I put glue on it. This is going to give it a little hook and it's going to make it easier to go around the edge of the Q-tip. What we're making is the little foot, like the little rubber foot that you see on metal shelving. And this is just going to be one layer of cardstock wrapped around the base of the Q-tip. I'll go ahead and put a picture on screen of what we're making in case you're a little bit confused. Um, I'm making a smaller version of this with solid shelving instead of the wire mesh shelving. And uh, for me, I want this to be something that um, the uh, owner of the coffee shop can put coffee mugs on because I do feel like I'm seriously missing coffee mugs in this project. So here you can see I've put little feet on all four Q-tips and this is just one layer of cardstock wrapped around. Now to start building the little shelving piece, I'm going to add some glue wherever I want my first shelf off the floor to be. And then I'm gonna go ahead and press the Q-tip in to that glue. Then I am going to add glue to the other side and add another Q-tip. Now you're probably gonna be asking, how are you going to keep this level. <laughs> well, I decided to go ahead and lay it down on my mat. That way I could have the little feet of the shelf um, on one line and then I could kind of eyeball and make sure that the shelf unit was kind of lining up at the top. And then I decided to go ahead and take a little super glue and just add a drop of it to wherever my glue joints are at. And if you want to do this, sometimes this helps the gluing process or it helps the glue grab a little bit faster, especially when you're doing something as fiddly as making a very uh, thin shelf. Sometimes it's nicer to have um, something that grabs a little faster. 
So I'm going to keep going around my shelf and adding my legs each time, laying it flat on my board, making sure that everything lines up really nicely and that my shelf should mostly be level. Again, this is going in my abandoned coffee shop, so it's not if it's not absolutely perfect, it's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take my long strip of paper that I cut earlier and this is going to go around the outside of the shelf and the outside of all the legs. And this is going to be the piece that kind of keeps it all together and helps solidify those legs so that they're not just moving all around and they're not easily knocked off the shelf. So I'm going to line it up on what I am thinking is the back of the shelf and then wrap it around the outside of the shelf piece and the legs. And as I go along, I'm going to keep adding tacky glue and slowly just pressing that paper into the glue. Now this does give the shelf a little bit of a lip on the top of it, but I have seen shelving where it does have kind of a metal lip that goes all the way around. And so um, I think this still looks pretty realistic. And then I'm going to go ahead and overlap it a little bit on the back of the shelf and cut off any excess paper that I don't need. And there I have my first shelf with a bit of a lip, but it definitely secures those legs to the shelving piece. Now as I go along, I'm just going to keep adding shelves, keeping in mind that I want this piece to be somewhere where I can put mugs, so making sure that I have um, enough room in order to put the things on the shelf that I really want on there. I'm going to go ahead and add glue to all the little um, corner areas where the legs are going to fit into. And then I'm going to fit it down over my Q-tip pieces and just kind of eyeball where I want the shelf to be. Like I said, keeping in mind what you want to put on the shelf is very important. This is not as, ad as adjustable as um, real life metal shelving. Um, and then again, I just lined it up on the mat on my desk to make sure everything was nice and square. And each time the process for making the shelf is the same, just add the paper that wraps around the Q-tips and the shelf. Now when I get two shelves in, I need to extend my Q-tips. Now if you're using wood uh, dowels, you can get ones that are long enough to go the entire length of your shelf. I didn't have wood dowels or enough wood dowels that were the size that I wanted, so that's why I'm using Q-tips. Also, I didn't know if I wanted to bend the shelf, and you can bend Q-tips a little easier than wood dowels. So that's why I'm using Q-tips, but you can use a dowel rod for this. So now I'm going to be extending it by one more Q-tip, and so on one, um, one part of the new Q-tip, I'm adding uh, super glue and then I'm adding tacky glue on the old q-tip and when those are mixed together they grab really really quickly and so I didn't feel like I had to just hold it there forever letting the tacky glue grab hold and then any extra I just took a toothpick and kind of just flattened out any extra glue that was sticking out so pretty quickly I have an extension onto my original q-tip piece now I'm going to add some glue and then take one of those long strips of paper again and do the, just like we did the feet where it was one layer of cardstock, I'm going to do that again here and it looks very realistic because if you have any of these metal shelving units, you know that you have to put the pieces together like this and they often have little connector bits in the middle. So then I'm going to continue adding my third and fourth shelf and um, then once I get to the top, I'm going to go ahead and mark off where I want to cut off my top Q-tip pieces. And once that's cut off, I can go ahead and add another layer of the um, cardstock to finish off the very top of the shelf. So here is my very basic little industrial shelf and you can do it in silver. Um, they come in lots of different colors but I really wanted mine to be black because I want the mugs that are going to go on it to stand out really well so I just decided to go with a matte black color. So I'm just going to paint the whole thing in acrylic paint and let that dry really well. And then of course, um, I'm gonna have to age it. Now aging black is a little bit different than aging anything else because if I put some watered down uh, 
black or brown paint, you're not going to see it very well. So you have to use lighter colors. And so I'm using a little bit of gray and I'm just going to dry brush it onto the black. And that gives it more of an old look, like it's been a little bit dusty. You can also add white. Now I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to go ahead and grab my 3D prints. Um, in the corner I'm putting the um, location of the prints. I'm also going to put links to it in the description below to give credit to the designers of these. I have a mug and, the, and a um, like a little caution sign that goes on the floor like a wet floor sign and also a radio. And so you can go and check out these files if you have a 3D printer and um, print those for yourself. Now I don't think any of them were actually miniatures. I think I had to scale them down quite a bit but if you um, do have a 3D printer you can scale things fairly easily. It took me a little bit to figure it out but um, it wasn't too hard. So when they come off um, the printer, at least my printer, they have these little leg looking things and I just have to take a little snipper and cut those off and they usually leave this little um, like bumpiness um, it's kind of a necessary thing for the printer to work correctly. Believe me, I tried to do it without and it did not work well, but the resin sands pretty well. And if you have questions about 3D printing, I do plan to do a video in the future about 3D printing and I don't know a lot now, so I don't want to make a video until I know more and can give you more information. So for now, I'm just painting this sign uh, yellow and it does have um, some French warnings on the front. I want it to say wet floor and so I have a plan for that but I did like the little caution symbol in the center so I'm taking some watered down black paint and I'm making it very very watery and just dripping it into the indented areas where there is a triangle and the little exclamation point. And I'm not worrying too much about paint getting on the surface because of course I am going to make this piece look very old. Now to cover up the engraved uh, or the 3D printed um, words that are already on there, I'm taking some paper and I wrote wet floor and then I'm going to add it on with some glue and this is just tacky glue and I'm going to work fairly quickly because I don't want my tacky glue to dry completely before um, I put some wet, I'm putting like a watery brown paint on there and that's going to make the paper pretty weak and so I'm just going to take my fingernail and once everything is covered in the paint I'm going to scratch at it to make it look like this paper was added and it's just been worn away. So you can see that I'm just kind of tearing at the corners and the paper gives way really easy and that's why I had to work fast before the tacky glue dried. So I'm going to put that aside and work on the mugs. We'll put it all in the coffee shop in a little bit. Um, but the mugs were pretty easy to paint and uh, if if I was um, making mugs so that someone would be handling them, I'd probably put a base coat on there, but because these are going straight into the coffee shop and probably never touched again, I'm not too worrying, I'm not worrying too much about a base coat. I'm just going to go ahead and paint acrylic straight onto the resin. So I'm doing some maroon cups and some beige cups. And as you can see, there are holes in the bottom of the cups and that has to do with the 3D printer as well. Um, so I'm using those to my advantage by putting them on some toothpicks as they dry. But before I put them on the shelf, because I do want some of them to be upside down, I do need to fill those holes. Like I said, the holes are important for drainage when it comes to the 3D printer because it uses liquid resin, but I don't want them now. So I'm going to use this joint compound and I'm just going to take a very tiny spatula and I'm going to get that joint compound into the hole and I'm going to spread it with my finger just a little bit to make it as flat as possible. And once I have all the holes filled in, I can take a little bit of that paint and just cover it up. And honestly, it looks like there never was a hole there to begin with. And I really love how these turned out. I really think um, that the printer did a good job and um, that they painted really, really, really well. 
So now the fun part, I get to put these little cups on the shelf and it's kind of fun to play around with um, some of them that are upside down, probably um, like they were drying or ready to be used. And so I'm using some tacky glue off to the side, holding the cup with tweezers and just lightly dipping the brim of the cup into the glue and then laying it on the shelf how I want it to be. I'm also going to put some of them as if it's fallen over, as if um, kind of as the building deteriorated, it knocked the shelf. And I will have one that looks as though it has fallen off and broken. So this is how I ended up getting the cups onto the shelf and of course I will be aging these guys. They're looking a little too nice, bright, and new on the shelf itself. And I still have some that I can put around the shop. So I'm going to put this one kind of near the um, food case so that it's easy for someone to grab. I'm going to put a couple over by the sink as if they're waiting to be washed. I'm also going to put one up on top of the coffee maker, so maybe someone who was working there um, put the cup up there and they weren't, they weren't done with it. I'm putting one over by the pile of dishes, one on the counter, and then I'm going to put a couple over on the table as if someone left and they were not quite done with their coffee. And then of course one on the floor that I am going to break. Now one thing I liked about this resin is that it kind of does break a little bit like porcelain would. Um, if I use wire cutters it will break it fairly easy. So I have one with a chip in the side and then one that has broken just completely in half. And here comes the aging part. Like I said I'm going to use watered down black and brown paint and just wherever I feel like it needs it I'm going to add that paint and I think I also did use a little bit of white here and there. Um, white can be a really good highlighter and give you a little interest in your aging. So now because a lot of these cups are facing up I need to go ahead and add resin because I want them to look as though the rainwater has been getting into them and creating kind of a gelatinous sludge I guess. So I'm going to let the resin settle and I'm doing a little bit at a time. I'm going to add resin and then cure it and then add more resin and then cure it because this resin can get hot and I don't want it to uh, disshape. Is that the word? I don't want it to um, kind of melt my cup. <laughs> um, so I'm, that's why I'm doing it in layers. Now I'm adding a little bit of the greenery that I've been using all over the shop and then I have this little pin that kind of looks like a little dandelion flower and I held it in there with um, some pliers until the resin cured and now I'm adding a tiny leaf. So it looks as though this little weed is growing out of the coffee cup. And then next to it I want to add just a little bit more of that um, green stuff as though it's growing up underneath this broken cup. So here's the two cups on the table. I'm going to do similar things to the other cups around the coffee shop. Um, and if you want to see more on how I use that green stuff, I, the one where I do the ponds in the floor, um, you can go watch that video and I, I go much slower and you can see more accurate um, ways that I do that. So now I'm going to be adding the wet floor sign to the wall and I want to add a little hook. So I'm going to take a sewing pin and I bent it and then I popped the head off and because everything is pretty much made out of paper I used the pliers to push the pin into the wall and so now I have the perfect little hook for my sign to hang on the wall and I do go ahead and glue that in place. So now I'm going to add a rug. This is not 3D printed. <laughs> this is cut out of an old hand towel and I'm going to add a little bit of glue and then just kind of smush it and mush it into place so that I like the wrinkles and then age it. And I usually tell you to start light. Well, I didn't here. <laughs> so um, I have one really dark, dark corner and so I tried to lighten up the aging on the rest of the piece. but. Um, you, I would imagine that a rug in a coffee shop would, would soak up a lot of gunk. So, um, Next I'm going to work on the 3D printed radio 
and it does a really good job of the details so I was really excited about putting this guy together. I went ahead and painted the body a brown color kind of to imitate wood or maybe fake wood and I decided to do the little I think it's like an art deco type um, design of the grate for the radio speaker. I did that in a dark gray and then added silver on top to give it a metallic look and I did the same thing for the little knobs. And then I also painted a little piece of paper gray to go in this hole and I'm not quite sure what it's for. Maybe it's for the radio dials but I just went ahead and did it like a plain gray. Um, and then for the speaker fabric, I just got this tan fabric and I'm going to glue the grate straight onto the fabric and cut it out, leaving a little extra on the sides. Now I can go ahead and put the whole thing together. I'm going to start by doing the little square gray piece of paper and that's one I just cut myself there wasn't anything that came with the print file that's supposed to go in there. I think you're supposed to put some kind of device in here, uh, like a real life device, but um, I just wanted it to be a miniature. So, <laughs> uh, Next I'm going to use super glue to attach these little handles and I'm just going to glue those straight onto where the holes are and like I said there's nothing, oh pardon my head here but um, this thing is tiny <laughs> so I had to look closely make sure I could get it on there. Um, but I think the holes are there so you can actually put something to turn the dials um, but like I said I don't really need it to work I just need it to be mini. So I'm going to put tacky glue on the tan fabric and this is going to help it stay in place once I try and put the grid inside because the fabric's going to overlap and glue against the back of the radio cover. So this is what the front is looking like. Here is the inside of the back and I'm going to add a little super glue to every single piece and let that dry because honestly I don't want anything to fall once I put the back on. And I'm also adding super glue to the edges of the back of the radio and I'm just going to add the flat piece on and if I have any gaps or any parts that aren't looking painted after that super glue dries I can go back and add a little bit of brown paint. So now I'm going to be using some elastic cord I just had in my supplies because I want it to look like a really old cord that um, is covered in fabric and this elastic cord ended up I think looking pretty perfect. So I'm going to glue, there's already a hole in the back I guess for a, a real life um, <laughs> plug um, but I went ahead and used that for my plug and to make the end of the um, plug because um, I'm actually making two here. So the gray one you're going to not see the actual tongs that are on the end of the plug but the orange one you are going to see the tongs. And so in order to make the tongs, what did I tell you? Okay so the plug itself is made from a little cutting of the q-tip and then I just painted it. To make the tongs I'm using a little piece of cardstock and I used a silver sharpie to color both sides and then I'm just going to cut the, there's like not even a measurement for this, it's so tiny, just the tiniest rectangle pieces of paper that are silver and then I'm going to use some pliers to hold that, dip one end into tacky glue and then just carefully put it onto the edge of the plug. So the brown part is the part I made with the sliver of q-tip. I think I skipped that part. Um, so anyway, because you will actually see this plug, I'm going to have it hanging down in the coffee shop so I wanted to make sure that you could see the tongs. So this is how my little radio is looking and I actually like how it turned out. I think the cord looks like an actual cord. Now I needed to find a place for the radio so I found this little shelf in my miniatures collection and I figured I could use it. Um, if you're aging something don't cut towards your fingers like I'm doing here. That's pretty dangerous and I'm surprised that I did that. Um, so don't do that. Always cut away from your fingers. So once I have that aged I'm going to glue it into the coffee shop with some tacky glue and I'm going to make it look like this radio has slipped down because the shelf has um, rotated, the radio has slipped off and because of that I want the cord 
to look like it's hanging down. Now to make it look like there's actually weight in the cord, I'm gonna have to glue that to the shelf and then glue it to the edge right here so that it hangs down straight because that's what's gonna give it the look of having gravity. Now this little gray cord that I made that I did not put tongs on, it is going to be for the toaster. And I want it to look like it's plugged in, which is why you wouldn't see the tongs on the plug. So I'm gonna use a little tacky glue, plug it in, and then I'm going to use some tacky glue slash super glue together to glue it to the back of the toaster, which is already glued to the countertop. So now it's time to age all of that in place. Um, and I'm also gonna make sure to add the bird poo to the toaster cord because there is bird poo all over there. Now, a little bit of sad personal news. Um, this week, our um, dog passed away and she's always been with me in my studio. And so because this is the project that I'm working on, um, while she passed away, I wanted to do a little memorial to her in this um, project. So her name was Audrey, and you might have met her if you watched my Q&A, um, but I just went ahead and I made a little note here on the side, and it says Audrey with the um, years for her, and she was just a really sweet dog, a constant companion and pal, so I thought it was perfect to make it look as if it was just, you know, a, a friend's note that someone had, w with number, it kind of looks like a phone number, I think, um, hanging out on the side of the phone. And um, so we're definitely going to miss her. Um, our hearts are broken, but um, she was a very sweet dog and lived a wonderful life. And uh, so anyway, I'm glad that I could do something a little bit for her here. And I definitely want to put something in the Adams Family House because she's the only creature that's ever actually been inside of the Adams Family House, if you saw that picture. Um, she was small enough to kind of fit in as I was building it. So that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the little hand-built shelf and the 3D printed miniatures. Uh, don't worry, I won't be doing that all the time. Um, it's just kind of a little way to help um, things along whenever I have a lot to do. Um, 3D printing can be an asset. So I will see you guys next week when we do part three of finishing up the abandoned coffee shop. Bye!